You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, everybody. This is Marriage Takeover, Tamika Thompson. And Eric. And we are here today finishing up a recap from if you all were with us last month. Hey, Margo. If you guys are with us last month, we talked about communication. So this is part two to the communication. So before we get started and in the swing of things, we do want to definitely start off with prayer. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, God, and we give you your name, the glory, give you honor and praise, dear Lord. We ask now, Father, that, Lord, you just have your way. God, I ask that you uh, forgive us, Father, for what we have missed on this day, oh, Father, God. continue to cleanse and wash us, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask that you create us a clean heart, renewing us the right spirit. Father God, we pray now, Lord, that during this broadcast, Lord, that you have your own way, Father. Yes, God, Lord. for you already know what your people stand in need of, oh God. So, God, we ask that you just meet every need now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that you just have your way. Have your Father way. God, we thank you right now, God, for everything, God, that you are allowing to come from this ministry, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, where marriages are 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 put together, oh God. Follow for where they're not having the differences that they that once kept them behind. But God, you're able to move in the midst of them, oh God. Yes. Father, we just bless you right now. God, we give your name the glory, the honor yes. and the praise. We say this prayer in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> And hey, Reverend Ray, I just want to give a big shout out to Reverend Ray as well. He has made it possible for us to be able to offer this platform um, to the world, to the nations. And so we are eternally grateful um, for the opportunity and uh, pray that God will continue to bless his ministry as well. Amen. Amen. The bishop. Thank you, sir. We must honor you. Amen. So let us go ahead and get right into it. So did you do your homework? I want to know who did their (laughs) homework. (laughs) <laughs> yes, indeed. Did you, Margo, did you do your homework? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, tell the truth. Shame <laughs> the devil. It looks like it's, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right because I tell you, we really wanted to um, put our because we, of course, you know, we did it as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um. So we want to we want to um go over our quick list um on what it on you know for we for the homework because we also did it as well like I said for well you know like we have said we just don't want you to just be the ones that's doing it but we want to also let you know that we're doing it as well because guess what every word that's coming out it's also helping it's also helping us as well right. because in order for us to stay free. We got to stay reminded on how God got us free. So uh, we did the homework as well, and it turns out, yeah, your boy is on top. Holla at me. <laughs> holla at me. What you say? Yeah, I think it was good. You want to start going over it? So, did, so it was a love-hate list was the homework assignment. And, you know, we asked that you pray before you actually got started with the homework assignment. And, um, you know, before you share it with your, your spouse as well, to also pray so that it doesn't give room for the enemy to come in. Right. So with that. Um, for as far as my love hate list, I'll go ahead and start from mine. No, wait a minute. No, you're starting it away. What's no, I'm nervous. Why are you nervous? Oh my god. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Go ahead. Okay. So. Listen. Don't judge me. Hallelujah. Go ahead on. All right. right. Well, and it was a platform, and that's the beautiful thing I think about the love hate uh the love hate list is because it's a platform again a tool to offer you some valuable, resourceful information that's practical, that anybody can do, and it helps in it. Like I said, it builds a relationship. Our platform, we just absolutely want to make sure that we are building and we are um, helping one another through the marriage, you know, relationship. Yeah, relationship. My love-hate list started off with, so, and, and you try to start off with the loves, right? 
So the love is. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Remember, no, you don't start with the love. You start with the hate. So remember, you okay, can you end it. End it with the love. So you okay. can end it with the love. So right, you can start yeah. at the good place, y'all see? No, mm-hmm. listen. So the hate <laughs> for me then was, so my husband is really, really amazing, and he loves to help people. And when I tell you guys he loves to help people, like he loves to help people. And <laughs> oftentimes people get consumed and helping people and making sure that they're taken care of, that sometimes he forgets kind of what we already have planned. So No, I don't. No, I don't. Oh, so you don't? <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I do. Yes, I do. No, no, no. Go ahead. 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 So my hate is that, for example, we can have something planned. And if he sees that something is like he's in the midst of helping, he will stop on us. We could be on our way out to dinner, you guys. Somebody have a flat tire, and God forbid it be a motorcyclist, right? Because he rides. <laughs> and he's stopping and pulling onto the side of the road. All my riders out there. And we're late for dinner, right? <laughs> See the face. And then I'm sitting there looking crazy because I don't want to be selfish, but at the same time, I'm just like, babe, please, let's, we have plans. We have dinner. Let's keep it moving. And he will get consumed into everything that he does. So we also have a business, and he's loving to help people, and he trains, you know, the athletes for sports in the high school level so that they can kind of be prepared and prep for college. So some of his sessions kind of run a little bit longer than others. And so if we have something planned, it's just, baby, I was hoping, baby, it turned into ministry, baby. <laughs> Just like, it, it did. It did. It so did. that's one of my hates. Like, if we have something planned, let's stick to the plan. And then um, not moving on things around the house. So if you all know Eric at all, if you grew up with Eric, you know Eric, you know he's not like wait a handy man. Wait a minute. So, you know he's not like a handy man. So wait a minute. We have things that need to be done around the house, and, you know, I'll mention it to him, you know, really nicely, politely, all that good stuff. My honey-do list. And sometimes it gets done, and sometimes it doesn't. Right. So it's right. gotten better, uh-huh. but well. um, sometimes it just does not get done. And so I am oftentimes looking like, okay, babe, for example, like our like we need to cross the windows and stuff around the house. And, like, he's like, oh, I got to get a gun. We already got a gun. So I'm just a, like, a caulking oh. gun. Go ahead. So we already have that. So I'm just like, okay, babe, so what, like, what are we going to do? We need to cross the stuff around the house because – I don't like bugs, and I don't want the bugs getting inside of the house over the summertime. Hey, we don't have no bugs now. Listen, we don't, but I'm just like, you know, little cracks in the window, like little stuff. And I'm just like, sweetie, you said a month ago that you were going to get the. Michael, this ain't funny. This ain't for you to be laughing at me. (laughs) So I'm just like, what are we doing? So that's another thing on my hate list. But I'm really, and I told you, that when we first started the hate list and the love and the hate list, like my list was like three oh pages long. But now that like we've been able to kind of grow together, I really only have those two things. Now they're big things for me, and they might not be so much so many big things for him. Um, but those are my two hate things. And then the love list is that he is absolutely super duper amazing. Like he is, um, he stepped into you know stepped into being you know, the strong leader and taking things on, taking charge for the house, making sure, like, he's a great father. And um, I absolutely love him for that. And so, (laughs) Michael, let's just Mike, you better start. (laughs) (laughs) And so so I appreciate him. Um, He takes charge spiritually. He takes charge. You know, he's the accountant by trade. Like, I hate numbers. Anybody, like, you ask me, I I can do the basics. I hate numbers. But he will take charge of things. He makes sure that the budget is straight. He makes sure that we can meet together on the budget like we're supposed to so I don't spend too much money and I don't get carried away. Um, He helps us so that we can reach our goals together. We have money goals this year. And so he's amazing with just kind of being able to put structure and things together like that. He's amazing at that. And so I absolutely love that about him. And I love that um, he never ceases to amaze me. Like, there are times and moments where um, (laughs) there are times and moments where I can, you know, have a bad day. Like, I love fresh flowers on my table um, at the house. My mom did that. It's just something about that for me. And so I absolutely love that about him. And it's like he will just stop by sometimes and just bring the fresh flowers if he sees that, you know, they're dead or I had to throw them out, whatever the case is. So I absolutely love that about him. What's the class is coming? But the class is coming, you guys. <laughs> but um, he's, I mean, he's great. He's a great guy. He really wants to do well. So I Aww. love that about him. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, 
because uh, I, I thought I saw a comment saying just to trust and believe. It did not start like that. This was <laughs> down through the year. Right. <laughs> God has been good to me because he has allowed me to be able to get it down to where it's just to because this is something – this is something that we do, we try to do quarterly. Oftentimes we miss it because everything's been going so great. Um, and so we, uh, and so it has just gotten down to two. So I have a few for her too, you know what I'm saying? Be easy. We have, I, I have a few, <laughs> praise the Lord. Because see, the thing is, 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 it's for us so that we can know what our week coming, our week areas are as far as with one another. And it has absolutely nothing to do with changing a person. It's just you always want to be better because if you don't, if if you if your spouse can't get what they need at home, what you think what you think gonna happen? That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna let you think about that one. So my thing was, I said, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all this right here now. If y'all know this, if y'all know this woman right here, on how God be using her. Really? Oh yeah, I gotta put that out there. Girl. Really? Yes. I mean, Is that y'all hate said, or love? I'm about to get there. Wait a second. I, I had to start with the hate. How come you don't have to start with the hate? But who said this was a love? Oh. Okay. You know what I mean? You gotta know how to massage it. You gotta know how to massage okay, it for, okay. for your Lord of Boom. So, but the thing is because she's so awesome and so dynamite in her gifting and with her anointing, it trips me out because when she allows others to take her focus off the things that God is trying to show her, and so that creates more um, confusion, if you will. And so I'm just like, oh, baby, you're, got, you're like so awesome. You, you have got to do it. <laughs> Please, don't worry about the people. Just go. And then, and the other one was, I think I might have misnoted <laughs> what it was, but I forgot. I'm sorry. I thought I wrote it down, but it's not there. I had another one. I really did, so it's not on the tip of my tongue anymore. <laughs> but what I wrote, I don't know. I don't know what I was trying to write. I'm sorry. Maybe next time. So. But the thing that I love about her is because I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a, I'm I'm a, you know you know I'm a coach. So in coaching, it has been when it's just me, it was very difficult. I'm gonna tell you, it was very difficult because I was getting everything, and she was able Co- to coaching what though? Oh, I coach wrestling and football. I'm sorry. And so in coaching wrestling, me being the only coach, didn't have an assistant coach, but it it was too much paperwork for me to try to keep up with. But this year, oh, my goodness. When I tell you she came alongside me and um, she came alongside me and just helped just like whatever. I mean, was able to get the parents on together. I mean, it's like now it became like one big family. And then because it came one big family, every last one of my wrestlers made it to regionals. And, and almost, um, and I think out of the three, out of the out of the six, uh, cause I only had I only had a small team, I had a small team. But out of the six that made it to regional, one ended up qualifying for state, and the other one ended up losing. Oh my God! But still, it was based off of how she was able to connect everybody together. Oh, mm. That was a lot of and prayer so, asking, y'all. I, I I remember now. So the other hate was. I can come in the house and be like, babe, let's go out to dinner. Oh, yeah. I'm tired. Girl, I'm tired, too. I just got to run around with these kids and count yeah. numbers all day. I'm tired, too. Let's just go out. Let's just be me and you. I'm tired. I said, you know what? I'm going to put that on my list. But Bam. wait a minute, y'all. Ain't no so, wait a minute. Ain't no wait a minute. So, so when he will come home, it's like nine, nine thirty. It's been a long day. I am ready for bed. I have wind <laughs> myself down in the bed. And he comes home. Come on, baby, let's go. Where we going? I'm ready, for, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> We're going to the soap. Don't I'm nobody go to bed. bed at seven o'clock. It was nine. It's nine, nine thirty. Come on, I want to take you to the restaurant. I want. I'm not hungry. <laughs> so it's a spontaneous, spontaneity. Yeah. So I, yeah. So I'm I. Moody. 
spontaneity. I, it's spontaneity. It's whatever. And so this is how. So this is how when it comes down to that communication piece. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is something that this is what we do. So whether it was on camera or not, right. we make sure that one that we're in a good place in order right. for that we can be able to one be vulnerable. And even we laugh at it, we do because you know he told me, hey, we need to call. I was like, yo, um, <laughs> these are some high windows. Uh, I'm, I tell you what, let me see if I can find somebody that can at least show me how to do this. So I ain't gonna lie, I put everything, I put it all off. I was able to uh, call like the window people, right? They came out and so they recalk, <laughs> they recalk the windows. <laughs> They did that for a brother. So I said, hey, hey, don't matter. They slowed down every time. And I was like, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I'm on my way. You know what I'm saying? So I'll know. work on the spontaneity if you work on getting the window top. Considered it done. Okay. <laughs> we'll make it happen. I, and so, but that's, but because now, understand now, our first time doing our love, hate list, it I didn't turn out like Oh, Lord, Lord no. I was in my feelings. Oh, you know, I, them jokes. And 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 that's good that you brought that up. So <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk was, about that. It was so, good. I brought did it. Did you finish your list though first before you? Yes, I got to the love piece. That's why we're still smiling. Oh, <laughs> so let's oh, talk yeah. about that. The very first. Oh no, hold on, wait a minute. Oh. I'm sorry. I got one more love thing. Okay. I'm sorry. Please forgive us for jumping back and forth. That's just the kind of person I am. <laughs> so, um, the last thing that I really love about this lady here. Oh my God. Girl, don't look at me like that. <laughs> we we're gonna have to we we'll have to close the camera real quick and come back tomorrow. Hallelujah. But what the thing is is that she's just been celebrating me, and I'm just like, what did I do? <laughs> it's like she's just been celebrating me to where it's just been I don't know because it's like it's just like how you put it. You know when when you're when your spouse praise you and celebrate you and bring out this oh yeah i am man hear me roar but she just been celebrating me and everything oh baby i love the way you fix your bike girl i ain't do nothing it's just running i just need to get it back to the store but guess what <laughs> she ain't know that but man here i am thinking i'm mr fix it on this thing no nah, that ain't work that's not for me this is oh babe i can't believe you cut the grass I like diamonds in my grass, y'all. Y'all know what diamonds? See, that's that's good. That's when you know you're good in country. Ain't no more. When you get diamonds in the grass. Ain't right? no good country. That's bougie. That's not bougie. You have to give it those straight lines and let's go. But anyway, but she celebrated. And I'm like, listen, first in my mind, I had to cut the grass so that I can seed it. But, hey, to you, it's celebrating. No problem. I'm enjoying every last little thing. And ended up cutting the whole yard that took me a little while longer. But God is great because I'm still tired from it. So, but it's that whole celebration piece, and it, and it, and it, I mean, it's good for you know for men, it's good to be celebrated, so that you don't have to look for it nowhere else. Because the thing is that what you are lacking at home, somebody else is gonna try and do that outside. You feel me? Go ahead, babe. I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, yeah. so I was gonna say so when we first started our love hate list. I'm telling you, our sessions did not last like this. I know. Um, or they didn't turn out this way. So we started, you know, I think a lot of it was, number one, the pride. Um, you know, I thought I was great at everything I did. So for him to come and tell me what he didn't like and what I wasn't doing, I was like, wait a minute. Like, this is <laughs> bump the brakes because I need you <laughs> to understand um, that this is not, like, how it was about to go down. And then we also had to learn how to um, – we also had to learn how to – communicate how we didn't like something with one another. Yeah. Because that was key. It's all about the tone. And if y'all know me and y'all grew up with me, y'all know kind of my tone is a little, I can kind of talk to you a little sideways sometimes. You have a girl with me. Need, I don't really like want to all the time, but sometimes it just comes out that way. Yeah. And I really honestly don't mean harm. And I don't sometimes even know that I'm my tone is the way that it is. Look at God. But I'm just like, uh, sorry. Like I didn't mean to say it that way, but this is really what I want to say. And I just had to learn how to like, change it right and that was something that i had to learn how to do but because i didn't know that at first man these sessions was brutal when i tell you and this dude the one he don't like to go to bed with the sun down on the raft so we be sitting up arguing and fussing and mad and not no, talking no, come and on, then man. we got to talk about it before we go to bed oh we're gonna finish this on a, like, on a good note 
Now, see, listen, because, see, the thing is that we got in, that we got to understand, it's in uh, Colossians 4, 6. It says, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So your tone, because oftentimes a lot of people, watch this, right, a lot of times we don't know how to take honesty or, quote, unquote, corrective Criticism. It's the pride, and that's when we yeah. when we indulge in our pride and indulge in our um, self edification. Edification. Then we actually miss the mark because what we do, we give that we allow that enemy to have that that one little crack to make it the size of a darn river, which I mean, really, is no need for. It. Because all we have to do is just learn to listen. Because see, the one thing that far as a lot of a, a, a lot of people, I guess, on how they have looked at marriage is that the man, that the woman is supposed to always serve the man. But I'm gonna need you to start reading your Bible because when you begin to look at it, because first, um, I do have the scripture; it's in here somewhere. But I'm, I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. And when you look at it. The head of her is me. The head of me is God. And so how if if I if she has to submit to me and I have to be submissive to her, how can we get that if we always have a friction because we don't know how to communicate about just about the simple things of how the things that I love about her and the things that I dislike about her. And so those are the things that you got that that's why communication, I apologize, but that's why communication is so key in a relationship because I know a lot of y'all can agree to the test that when you are on the same page with your spouse, you can be thinking the thing and your spouse will say it. And you'd be like, what? I was just thinking that. You'd be like, way to go. We on the same page. Get at me. Go ahead, baby. You got something to say? No, I was going to say that was good. That was really good. So I wanted to go over the love-hate list. You know, and then also, again, break it down. Like, it has not always been that way. So I don't oh want you guys God. to always think that, oh, that was great, because your first session with the Love Hate List may not go that way. Um, but here are some things that I think that you can take with you, right? So first, check the tone. Just understand how you can communicate something that's negative in a way that it's positive but still be able to get that word across. Right. So let's see. I think when we first – when we were first date, like Mary, our biggest concerns were, like, mine was the cleaning. So this dude wouldn't, like, really clean. Don't hate me. And so a way that if that's one of your situations that you can kind of go through and you can say, you know, hey, babe, like, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate everything that you're doing. You know, sometimes, you know, the kitchen needs to be, you know, cleaned or sometimes the bathroom needs to be cleaned. You know, can I get some help a little bit, you know, when it comes to doing the bathroom? Can, right. you, can you maybe do the tub and then I'll do everything else? Right. Or, you know, something of that nature. So that way it doesn't feel like it's an attack on them. One of the things that I learned, and it took me a really long time to learn it, y'all, is that the men, for the ladies out there, the men want respect. And if you communicate to them in a way that they feel that they're being disrespected, it's over. It's like shut down. Yeah. It's like shut down. And, I, and granted, I, you know, a lot of men may not be that way, but some men that are, you know, I guess I'd say that are headstrong, that's I, that's the one I see it most common with. But, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. it's that, you know. But so it's that you got to really know, I won't say really, but you, but when you know your spouse, and I'm saying it's going to be a, a everyday transition. Why? Because, Every day we're changing. Right. Whether I mean, right. especially if you, especially if you in Christ and you chasing after purpose, right. you better get used to it. See how she pulling me close? Oh, yeah. Ain't because of the camera. Hallelujah. She want me close. <laughs> but it's not because of um, you know if you're chasing after purpose, their change is gonna literally take place because you're gonna find yourself one minute in a battle and then you're gonna find yourself in another minute just blessing God. Because you're chasing after purpose, and so then, next thing you know, because of the anointing that God is going, that God is dispensing upon you, it's going to change certain things that you do, and it's right. going to do, change certain things that um that 
you know what I'm saying, that you're accustomed to doing, that you and your spouse are accustomed to, going, to doing. So that's why when you're on the same page, oh, man, that's what makes everything so key. You got to say that, babe? No, I was going to say, that's really the beauty of marriage is being on the same key. Same like being, being on the same page, being same on the note. same same what being aligned. How about that? Harmonized. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing and it takes and you go through seasons. Yes. Yeah. And so this is a tool and so let's dive into really what the word of God talks about how you know communication. Right. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. And so when you look in Ephesians four, twenty five through uh twenty twenty nine, therefore having to put away uh falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath and give no opportunity to the devil. So that's right there. When I came across, like I said, as y'all already know, if you know God or not, I'm just know for us, we needed him. So just like you see this here triangle right here, this here is us. This right here is God. This right here ain't going to never come together. Why? Because of flesh. But it's God that keeps this thing together. So when you recognize God in the midst of this, oh, my goodness, then you be on, then you understand what the oneness is. It's, go ahead. I was going to say, and so, and Keshi, you said something. Um, so, Keshi, we went to high school together, and so she said something really good. What she say? First, find a God-fearing man, or find a God-fearing man first. And that's, that's key, to find a God-fearing man first because, you know, if you are unequally yoked, and unequally yoked is not always that they're in a different, um, how do we want to tread down this? Yeah, let me just it's say. That it's not a different religion so much all, also to speak, but also like unequally yoked being that you are not yeah. aligned with Christ. Right. Right? So if you are aligned with Christ, then they don't have really, like you aren't in alignment and yeah. you aren't going to be in alignment but, because you don't really have a covering. Right, because then now your now your values are different, and so the one thing that you gotta understand because that, even as you begin to go through the Bible, see that one caught me off guard. I got scripture, <laughs> but I want to make sure I have it for you. But um, because you gotta understand, men first got to recognize what they have, and a lot of men really do not know what they have. So now the Bible says, "He that finds a wife finds a good thing." Right. So it don't right that right there. Christ didn't say you had to be saved. He just said if you find a wife, you find a good thing and what and obtain favor from the Lord. Right, right. That scripture that is Bible based. Cause guess what? My mama only drugged me to church. It was still me that had to accept right, Christ. Right. When we got married. God, Jesus we was both. the farthest thing on right. my mind. Was, you hear me? And I was going to say that. So when we first got married, like, Eric grew up in the church. I, I went to church, but it was kind of occasional. It was a sometimes thing. We <laughs> <laughs> went to church sometimes. <laughs> No, 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 my bad. She was a special day saint. Go ahead. So, <laughs> I, I special day. occasionally, I wasn't drugged to church. It yeah, was, please. So, our paths for church were a little different. Right. So, but it was really, it was awesome to see, like, when we first got got married, we were both in a backslidden state. <laughs> So, so I need to re I need to right. not, not rededicate. I just need salvation. We yeah. were both in a backslidden state. So it was a matter of, okay, so what are we really doing? Are we going to do this or are we not going to do this? And once we made that commitment, and it always seemed because Eric was, a, I think, a little bit more seasoned in the church. Because I got drugs. I'm trying and, to tell you. And I had a whole lot of issues going on. I had them too, Jack. <laughs> yes, Good sir. Lord. Ray, th- that, that's exactly what I was. Christmas, Mother's Day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Easter. Easter, New Year's. Now, you know you was not in church. I don't eat no New Year's. I might, you're right. I might not have been. The actually. first time I did not go to church with New Year's, guess where I was? My house at a party. Somewhere at a party. Well, I'm to a party I said, house. Lord, where is she taking me? Already but, taking what I'm accustomed to. But for that to say, we were able to grow spiritually together. And there were times where Eric superseded. He was way ahead of me when it came to the spiritual things, but I still had to find my way. But because he, he understood that there were some things that I wasn't going to – like, I just didn't understand a whole lot of stuff, and I questioned everything. If you know me, I'm a question. If I didn't say it right, I'm questioning it. Everything and I have so, a question to it. You hear me? <laughs> it, 
Because you gotta understand, because for one, and so when you look in, when you look at having the, uh, um, when you look at having that unsaved person, I don't, you know, I, I just believe the word. Now I, I already know salvation will come because I, I have witnessed it happen in other relationships where the person, whether the father, uh, the husband, was not in the church, but the wife was. But the husband knew, hey, you know what I'm saying, you go to church, you go ahead and do your thing, whatever. But what I witnessed was that that woman continued to pray because she still honored him as though the scripture as though the scripture said. And then it went to the point of, well, let me just go to church and see what's, what's going on over here. But then right after that, then the, the then the, her husband ended up receiving Christ. But then at the same time, guess what? I've also seen it go the other way. And so at those times, you really got to look at what are you looking to invest. Because if you're looking to invest, God is going to do something. Because the thing is, when, when the husband finds the wife, that's how favor comes. But if that woman is chasing after the husband, to me, to how Man. I understood it, understand, to me, to Bro Thompson right here, how I understand it, was that it was in reverse because that's not what God was saying. Can we move on? I was I was done. Y'all good? All right, praise the Lord. And so and so with that, back we're dealing with you know, talking with communication, um, and what uh Ephesians is Ephesians where it was, right? Ephesians. Okay. And Ephesians what I was saying was, you know, be angry. Let me go back. Let me just start back at the top. It says, Therefore having put away falsehood let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor. Be honest, work his, uh, work his own hand so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So I'm, I'm going to start right there because right here is that when we begin to communicate, Watch out now. But when we when we begin to communicate and begin to um, speak out our differences, right? Honestly, guess what? It's going to make you mad. It is literally going to make you mad because you're telling me about me. Right. Some I already know, but you're telling me about me. So it's like, oh my god. But oh it doesn't god. have to make you mad if it's communicated. I think in a way, in, in love, number one, right, is that it's com- communicated in the right tone. Let your speech be gracious, right. And so, and that's the thing. And you know, and all the time, it can be in the right tone. But yeah, because I ain't gonna lie, when we were getting better, I think I was like slacking, and she was like, baby, you know. I don't understand why you just can't. I think it was like I had to sweep something, something that I always had to do with my sports stuff. Well, I don't know why you just can't get this there. How you said it was very nice, but it just felt as though you're calling me a pig. But it's cool. It's cool. It was nice, nasty. So, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And so, but, yeah, I got mad. But I don't, I don't need to go hauling off and screaming and shouting and all of that because now there's some stuff down right. that I got to look at. You know what I'm saying? But even though she still followed up with something that she that, that she loved about me, hey, I appreciated that because it gave me a vote of confidence to say, hey, you know, hey, there it is. Let's let's go. Let's do it. And so, but the thing is, because you know, oftentimes even as as um as marital couples, you you hit those situations to where it might take a minute. To deal with, right? But that's the piece because the thing that if we allow the sun, if we allow the sun to go down while we're still at odds, you're giving room for the enemy to come in to make it wide. Right. Why? Because now that when you, you know, one of you could be sound asleep, but the other person is like on it hard. It's like really thinking about and contemplating. And so now all this stuff is absorbing. And it's getting bigger. So basically what was just a molehill has now turned into a mountain. Right. And so now when you get to talking about it, now they done, now when you try, when it come up to try to finish dealing with it, now you got all this other stuff. Because you done created a whole different situation. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm guilty of that. I know that I can do that. So even with 
him wanting to talk about and communicate certain things before the sun goes down on a raft, it's a great thing for me because my mind, y'all, my mind is my worst enemy. And so if I will allow and I'll sit and I'll think and I'll contemplate, like y'all know last, last month, if y'all were on here live with us, Eric was in Florida because one of his, uh, his aunts passed away. <laughs> I don't need to bring so that up. We are watching the live, you know, talking back and forth live, and his hands hitting across the screen. And I noticed he didn't have his wedding ring on. Boom! Yet. I got it on the day. And yeah. he told me he left it upstairs. He left it home because he was trying to rush to get to the airport. Now, after 20 years of marriage, right? right? <laughs> you, you, like, there, we've come a long way. But that first thought was like, wait a second. He done with all his family. He done with all his friends, and he got the nerve not to have his ring on. I'm in and Florida. Like, I talked to him a couple of times before, you know, Sunday, and he never mentioned that he left his ring. I was trying so, to hold out. So I'm like, huh, that thought could have spiraled, and it could have rolled, and it could have went into a whole bunch of other different things. But I said, no, I trust my husband. He left his ring. We were in a rush to get to the airport. It's cool. It, the ring just symbolizes the marriage. So if it takes a ring for you to have to act right and do what you're supposed to do, wow. you're in the wrong situation. I'm trying to tell you, sir. So I had to trust and to know and not give give way and feed into those thoughts that I was thinking and was just like, you know what? I trust him. I love him. He loves me. He's got to deal with God. He's got to deal with a whole lot of people if he decides he don't want to, <laughs> want to do right <laughs> while he's in Florida. Just so give me two <laughs> So we're good, but that was one of the examples that if you don't deal with the situation right where it is, you could see, and it was a real simple thing. Small. He, uh, real small. He Very left his small. wedding ring at home because he was trying to get to the airport. Mm -hmm. It's really okay. Like, if we don't sit and we don't deal with those things, then guess what? Right. And then understanding, it's too. Better. Right. And understanding, too, is that that's that time that you have to be vulnerable. And it's hard to do because when we came across the understanding of being vulnerable with one another, then we had to put down our guards. And it's funny because when things are going good, and you don't think you have it. But when you hit, but when you hit that, mm, that, that area that, oh, wait a minute, security, your guard come up. And so now you just, now it's like it's hard how you put it? Now it makes it hard to be vulnerable because, man, when you are when you can be vulnerable with your spouse, things like that would literally turn your spouse into your best friend because literally you can actually show your bad nakedness, and all she or he would do is just cover. Mm. Mm -hmm. Look at that! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> And that's something to deal with, too. Like, do you find that it's hard for you to be vulnerable in your marriage? Because when we first started it, <laughs> I wasn't with uh, Like, I was. She had an electric fence. I did. My fence was just made of brick. I'm just a different kind of female. Like, oh my I always God. say that the females are more sensitive and they're more no, this one's vulnerable. A... <laughs> I'm just a different kind of And I don't know, know why I'm that way. I was not. I don't know why I'm wired that way, but it was just really difficult for me to let my guard down and to be vulnerable, even with my husband. And, you know, we were married with kids, and it was just like, why is it so hard? And for me, it was I didn't want to be hurt. That was only Eric. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, get hurt. I didn't want to let him into this place that was so very sensitive, sacred. so very sacred, so very tender, so very important to me and I'm letting somebody else in that I might get hurt mm. and so for me that was the biggest thing I was tired of being hurt I was tired of you know being rejected what if I said something or what if I felt a certain way that he no longer loved me that he no longer wanted to be with me anymore those are some of the different thoughts that I had and why I did not really want to be vulnerable or what if I say something or what if I reveal something that's really going to crush him that's really going to hurt him and once I was just like, you know, he was like, babes, it's okay. And right. we cried together. We talked together. We And we got over that. That's right. I did cry. <laughs> and we got over it to where we were building that relationship. And this was not, this wasn't even within our first, this was what, maybe year 12, 13? No, uh -uh. I think that portion was before Lee was born. So it had to be, what, hello? Lee is nine. And Eric was what? Okay, listen, it was more than nine years. How about yeah. that? <laughs> so, 
So it was a matter of saying, okay, well, I'm giving you this most tender, precious part of me and who I am, and let's, like, I'm trusting you to take care of that. Right. And, this, and I'm this, trusting you to treasure that. Right. And it's the same thing with us, with us men. Because oftentimes we got to go out to this world showing everybody that we're strong. But when we come home, your wife, especially if you, if you, if, listen, if your wife is that one that turns your house into a home, that if your wife is that one that, I mean, just treats you like a king coming in from battle, man, that is that one that knows your wounds, that knows your scars, and don't try to take advantage of it. Right. That that's who you can be vulnerable to because now it begin to show you certain things about you. Because I had to why can't I be why I couldn't be vulnerable to her? Why? Because I was literally waiting on that moment for you to find something that you don't like and be ready to high tail it out of there. <laughs> but I was like, Man, you know what? <laughs> Guess what? I'm tired now, so oh, uh, here's, here's this is me. These are this is the ABCs of me, baby. <laughs> so, so, you know, hey, this is me, and it and it got and for what it did, it took a burden off of me to where I can be even stronger right. when I go out. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it was like that whole vice versa thing because, you know, it's like man, I got you, and I knew she got me because one year I was coaching, right. And me, I don't pay no attention. Oh, so man. she knew um, what was going down behind me because I just pay attention. And so one of the parents was attacking me, not my coaching style, but me. I started hearing all this commotion. And I see, because at this time, Aaliyah was born now. So Aaliyah was, like, small. Next thing I turn around and look, I see one of the other parents got a Leah, and she done took the earrings off. Was like, "Yo, what's up? You gotta say, let's go now." Oh. I was like, "Jesus, is she <laughs> saved right now?" I was so, saved, y'all. I was saved, y'all. But that's what happened because it's like, hold on, wait a minute. You don't, you don't say that because of she knows me. Right. She knows. He'll understand what I'm saying. See, to know her is you think of being intimate. No, 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 no. It goes even deeper than that. Right. She knows me. And it's just like with her, I know her. So she I know, don't call me about no craziness because I'm on my way, period. So it's, it's, that's when you're being vulnerable with one another, that's where it goes. And then you really begin to find such a new love. Uh, I would say a new love, but a fresh love that's even deeper than what you even first expected. Right. Awesome. Because even it got to the point because she was more reserved because of our, us having our love, hate, and learn, learning how to communicate. Guess what? Man, it brought, she's more um, what you would call reserved. I'm more, um, a, uh, what you call it? Rough neck, y'all. He talks about me being. I'm hood. talking. I'm more adventurous. <laughs> I'm more adventurous. Okay. I'm more adventurous. Okay. I'm more adventurous. <laughs> I never thought one day she'd ever jump on the back of my motorcycle. She's like, "Baby, let's go for a ride." What? And this fool, he Listen. got me on the back of the bike going 150 miles per hour, y'all. No. No, it's my first time. No. Then what was it? 200. It was 130. Okay. See? But it wasn't long. I just yeah. we had to get in a safe place, and I was, okay. can ride safe. But that was the only time, and that was like that was it. That was it. But the thing that tripped me out was that she was willing to do that. Right. I was just like, oh my god, uh, I didn't know how to act. I didn't. I didn't know. How to, well, let's go. You see, I didn't know how to act when a buck third went on the back. Right. But you know, but the thing was, it was like, Lord, I know he is going fast. But what? But by us being vulnerable with one another, because that was one of the um, one of my hate things back in that time was, yo, you always want to stay reserved. Well, y'all, I'm trying to explore. Let us explore. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like now it's like then, even while she's being reserved, she taught me how to literally sit back and actually pay attention to certain stuff. Yeah. And because I learned that from her, guess what? Man. 
I caught a whole bunch of snakes that was trying to get me caught up. I said, well, look at God. Through my wife, hallelujah. And then at the same time, by us being able to communicate effectively, she actually began to open up. So it's like, now, some things, she doesn't... She, she doesn't she done got a little visual. I said, wait a minute. Like, she went <laughs> she went four-wheeling by herself. I mean, yeah. with, a, with a crew. Me and my sister. But they was out. That thing hot dog. That yeah. ain't that ain't her. Ain't that is, skydiving. Like, oh, skydiving. my God. She went skydiving. Yeah. I was too heavy. That's what they said. But I said, I can oh, fit the suit. <laughs> but that was too heavy. <laughs> but she went skydiving and, was, and wants to go back. I said, wait a minute. Hold on now. I do talk about the adventurous stuff, but uh, I think you're going a little bit overboard. She says, no, nah, it was fun and free. But that's what I'm saying, because when you're being vulnerable, you begin to open up to certain to, to new stuff. Right. That even makes now, that right there, it begins to make your marriage more awesome. Because right. now you get to go in that mug and be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Oh, um, right. yeah. So you know what I mean, and it's just how that's just how we've been um been going with the communication. What you got? Yeah, no, that was that was really it. Oh, and no. then just being gracious. There were a couple other scriptures, but it's one that I that God has really showed me that I really want to. Uh, we got about fourteen minutes. Left. Oh yeah, we 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 running running. Um, no, but time goes by so fast. Man, they always say you're having fun. Um, time flies when you're having fun. But one thing that what communication would yeah. do, no, nah, it's not, I don't think I had a chance to put it on there. I apologize, my bad. But, excuse me, the one thing that communication would do is that it will put you, it will put you on the same page. Right. And during, um, I want to say within the past three years, um, we have been, ooh, look at God. It's Psalms 133. It's only three verses in that song. But in the past three years, we made a conscious decision to stay on the same page, to watch what God would do. And I'm, I'm going to read to you. Psalms 133. It says, Behold, Good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This right here is one love, one love, one love, baby. one love, and it's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the that ran down that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment, meaning all the way down, oh, all the way down here. All the way down there. And then it says, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the, upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord will command a blessing, even life forevermore. So whatever you and your wife be touching and agreeing on, you and, and you on the same page, or what I'm telling you is that, God will command the blessing, period. And that's just, like I said, it's just from us learning how to communicate with one another. And don't get me wrong, we understood that there was more that we had to learn during our communication, period, because then it began to get to the stuff that wasn't being spoken, you know, right. things that you just kind of like, ah, oh, get to it. But it's like, no, nah, baby, I need you to tell me everything. And same thing she said, said that, because I was like, listen, the one thing that the enemy want to do, guess what? He want to keep the he want to keep the woman in bondage so that he can kill the man. Right. Y'all don't, man. A lot of men don't really know who we really are when we begin to literally step in just into the manhood that God has called for us to be. Oh my, oh my Lord! You won't even you won't even know what God will do, man. When you can walk, when you can tell the doctor, both my kids were both. Both of my kids were preemies. I had a doctor tell me that one of them, that my son uh, was going to be born the next day. My night's 11 o'clock. You said I was going to be born on the 22nd. I said, oh, no. And I had already been in labor for 18 hours. Yeah, yeah child. We ain't doing this no more. No, we ain't going to do I said, no, no, no. Uh, I told the doctor just like this. I said, no, he coming today. He coming today. That boy was born at 1133. 
kidding me. I'm not playing with y'all. And so, and then you come down to my door, it was a preemie. Came out, built court, wrapped around her neck with face blue. All I said was, Jesus. Man, that girl began to scream like, well, I don't know what. Then they try to tell me, because she had to have her tonsils and things removed. And I'm just telling you, men, on who you really are in your house. Man, trying to tell me that her, oh, yeah, part of it. Well, trying to tell me that she, Oh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me because I forgot the mic here. I apologize. But they trying to well, they couldn't do the surgery because she had an irregular heartbeat. Right. I say what? A who? Oh no, nah, the devil is another lie. And I begin to pray against that thing. Guess what? The doctor come back. Oh, that thing is actually normal. So it don't. It's not gonna really do anything. All it is is just a beat that want to help. So she got a super duper heart. Basically. <laughs> and so. And my daughter, guess what? She all, all she want to do, she just want to help people. I said, I said, God, you gave the right heart to the right person. Right. So that's what I'm saying, fellas. When you, when you on one accord with your, right. with your wife, oh man, it should tell you because God will even begin to show you things that's going on with her. Yeah. You may not even understand what it is, but you're like, listen, babe, I just had this thought that. You was feeling X, Y, Z. Next thing you know, she just started crying. What? Wait a minute. Who told you this? Why? Because when you tap in, oh, man, because oftentimes we don't really recognize that the woman, the woman is under us, the man, and then we're under God. But that does not mean that you get to trample over her. Oh, that does no. not mean that you get to disrespect her. So you, that uh, does not mean that in any shape, fashion, or form. So I want to make sure we put that out there because sometimes people will take that scripture and they will um, utilize it in a way to benefit them and how they want to feel, and that's not what scripture, and no. that's not how it was designed for. That's not, that's not what that scripture, see, that's not what it's scripture, oh, you got to submit to me. Oh, hush. Just hush. Right. Because yeah, you gotta submit to her as well. But what is that? I'm not an administrator. Right? I'm sorry, I'm not an administrator. In my two wrestling season it proved it. But I submit to her because she she can put that thing together quicker than anything I know. When it comes down to money, mm, no, no, no. <laughs> Ooh, no. That's when she submit to me. So you got to understand because guess what? That whole submitting thing, that's vice versa. Right, and that's and, not to do with I say and that's and, not, that's and not that. No, no, see, you need to get that part right there together. Understand that's not that's not that's not what it what it's saying. So you got to understand that this is it's the team. You know what I'm saying? One love. My help me. I'm your help. Me. Exactly. My help me <laughs> because when the thing is, see, I got to get more than the other scripture because do you know there are certain things. And there's certain things that she can do that God will actually give the husband that if she does it outside of the husband. Now, you got to understand this. I'm going to tread lightly on this, so I'm just going to set you up for the next session. <laughs> but there's certain things that she can, that she, if she chooses to do it, do you know the husband actually have the power to still veto it? Ah, oh, got you. Look at you. But you got to get to know Jesus and his word so you can understand because it's because you got to understand. And I'm talking about this is like in in his, in this in this time. I'm not talking back in Jesus' time when the Bible was written the first time and then passed to be rewritten and all that stuff. I'm talking about right now. I'm going to tell you now, y'all know all from where we at is all scripture based. For how we got to where, how we, how we got to where we are, it's all scripture. Because it was, if it wasn't for God, guess what? Mm. I've been out, and I'll tell y'all about that on the next, um, on the next one, on how we almost came to divorce. Yes, Lord. Now we mentioned it last month too. Yeah, it was a mention. No, we're gonna get into it. Yeah, I'm gonna dig in that thing. Because then now you gotta learn how to put things back together and not hold. Them to it. Mm. Wow! Did I just make that sound suspenseful? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's almost eight o'clock, and I definitely want to honor everybody's time. What we're gonna do? We had quite a few scriptures that we wanted to share with you all, so I'm just gonna attach them 
inside of the thread. So if you want to go back over and you want to reach out to them, you know, refer to them, read over them, that would be amazing for you guys to do. I also want to pose, um, I want to also pose to you guys, we are thinking about, and we're really excited. We're just now starting Marriage Takeover. Um, we've been married. May will be 20 years. We're really excited about it. And the platform why we wanted to do this was just because we have been through so much in our marriage, the dips, the roles, the everything. And we wanted to be able to offer an, a platform that we really desired when we were getting married. Like, we didn't know a whole lot of anything. And it felt like every time we confided into somebody, it turned into the gossip session. So other people learned about our business. There really weren't a whole lot of resources for us, for us to really kind of go into deep dive into, you know, really wanting to become better in our marriage. And so this is why we created this platform. So it's for us to be able to help one another. We are not the experts. We can share what we've been through. We absolutely want to help you guys, whatever you're going through. Offer a platform. And, yes. Yeah, and, and oftentimes, it's not even if you're not even going through anything. Even if, Even you, if you want to share, just do it. It has worked for you. Yeah. And um, so we're really excited about this platform. We thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for your feedback, so much for the participation. We absolutely thank you guys so much and, and really appreciate you guys for just kind of partnering with us. Um, we are thinking about January was when we started uh, the marriage takeover. And so we're looking to be able to do it in January of, what is that, 2019. We're thinking about doing like a marriage retreat. Really? In January? I thought we were talking about any time between January and January March. January and March to do a marriage retreat. And so we want to kind of reach out to you guys for, you know, the what you would like to be able to do, whether it's going to be a cruise, whether it's going to be a mountain retreat, whether it's going to be an island. Um, but we want to make sure that it's affordable. It'll be our one-year anniversary, and then maybe what we can do is do it every year thereafter. But I need to hear from you guys. I don't want to just make the decision. We don't want to make the decision. No. Um, so it's listen. going to benefit everybody that's going to be a part. Right. And so if you just put in your comments below, I was going to try to do a poll, but to be honest, I've only done a poll once, and I don't know if I could do it in this comment thread. So mm -hmm. I will try to do it, and if I can't, but if you can just let us know in the comments area, if you want to do a cruise, if you want to do like a mountain retreat, or if you want to do an island um, for the marriage retreat and the time frame, whether you want to do January, February, or March, um, we want to try to do it within that first quarter of the year right. just because it will be kind of fresh on people's mind. But I consider January, I think that, you know, it's right after the holidays, so that might not be a good month. So um, just, you know, think about that. Let us know what it is you want to do. And we'd greatly appreciate it. And so as we kind of get it all together, we'll kind of bring it all together, figure out, you know, what we're going to do, where we're going to do it, all that great stuff. Right. And it'll be amazing. And then, all right, well, we'll go ahead and during that time, we'll also have the details because it's, I understand it's about a, I said that wrong. It's about, say it's, I, not about us. it's not about us. That's what I'm trying to say. But what I'm saying is not, it's not about us, but it's about, it's about you guys. It's about you all because, I mean, I don't know, we had to, because when I tell you, we had to literally weather the storm. We literally had to weather the storm, the, the storm, and this is just something that God has put on our heart to share. Now, I listen, whether you go or not, guess what? <laughs> Brother Thompson is still going to enjoy himself. Right. Either way, we're going. I, you know, we're going to have some fun. I don't know about you. We're going. But what I'm saying is that it's really no pressure. Right. Because oftentimes I got it, but we want it to be affordable. I don't care if we do a retreat down the street. I don't have a problem with that. Right. Why? Because you got to remember, as long as you got your boo, got your boo, you good. You good. <laughs> so um, with that, so like I said, if you could put that in the comments, we'd greatly appreciate it. We want to kind of get things um, right. wrapped up. We have a minute left, y'all. So um, before we go into prayer, if there is anybody who is listening now or who will be listening in the future who is not saved, who wants to give your life to Christ, we absolutely welcome you. If you love the Lord and you say, you know, I don't really know a whole lot about this thing, but we absolutely, you, maybe I'll try to sing out just a little bit. I grew up Catholic or I grew up in a different, you know, I didn't grow up in church. And I hear this and this is like fun, this is amazing, but I'm kind of a little shy and I don't know what it's all about. We welcome you to just try it out, right? Just try Jesus. If, if you believe it in your heart, Confess it with your mouth, right. and we ask that you get into a good Bible teaching church. Bible teaching. Um, and welcome you and embrace you into the family. 
All right? So we love you. Um, yeah. We're going to go ahead and pray out, and we thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for your support. God, we thank you. We honor you. We love you. You are an amazing God. Yes, you are. And, God, we thank you for those that were listening, those families that are married, those who are divorced, those that are single, those that are still looking and searching. And, God, I'm just asking that you would completely cover them now in the name of Jesus, that you would wrap your arms around each of those families. God, where there is any brokenness, God, I ask that you yeah. mend it in the In the name of Jesus, God, that you would continue, Lord, to have your way in their lives, that you will continue to build them up, continue to teach them how to communicate wisely, Lord, continue to teach them how to, God, talk with the right tone, right. And with love, God. Yes, God, and Lord, let not the frustrations kind of go over and just fester and boil and to get into these bigger, giant things, God, that we're not able to control. I ask God that you bring peace. I ask God that you bring joy. Yes. I ask God that for their every pain, God, that you bring power, God, yes, in the God. mighty name of yes, Jesus, God. that they be able to minister to another couple, yes. to another family. Yes. And God, that your love, God, will continue to overflow into every household, God, yes. into every situation, God. Yes. Lord, we honor you, God. We magnify your holy name, God, because you are a righteous God. Yes, you and are. we love you. We thank you. You are so awesome. Yes, you are. We love you, God. You are a faithful God. Continue to watch over the families. Continue to watch over the children. Yeah. Continue, God, to bless each and every home, God. We thank you. We love you. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Love you guys. Good love night. Love you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover. <laughs> Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work. For an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a word in season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., Be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month at 10 a.m., join Reverend Curtis, Reverend Novena and Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. And on four Saturdays, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson, where she shares a broad range of topics to help believers persevere and overcome. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. 